Derivatives are complicated financial contracts, and they played an important role in the recent financial crisis. In fact, Warren Buffett called them financial weapons of mass destruction. So now regulatory efforts are on the way both in Europe and the United States to eliminate at least some risks associated with those derivatives. However, our research shows that this new regulation might introduce more risk than it eliminates. Under the new regulation, which, by the way, is called EMIR in Europe and Dodd-Frank in the United States, so under this new regulations, bank will no longer deal with each other when they close this transaction, which we call derivative. They now will only deal with this centralized counterparty, which is a new institution introduced into the system, which takes over, as it is, all the transactions which are now just bilateral between a bank, bank A and Bank B. So the central counterparty will now serve as a focal point in all these derivative transactions. Financial system can be modeled as a network where links are deals that banks do with each other. But it's a very particular kind of network. It's not a random network where everybody is dealing with everybody else. No, it has a very few or very big and well-connected financial players. We call them core institutions. In Netherlands, think of ABN, ING, and Rabobank. And then it has many, many so-called peripheral institutions, which don't have to be particularly small, but they are not as well connected. They do deals with the core, but not with each other. And what kind of new risks are involved? If one of the core institutions gets into trouble, it is of course a bad news for those peripheral institutions that deal with that particular one, but not to the rest. Well, later on, when the central counterparty is introduced in the system, indirectly everybody becomes connected to everybody else via that central counterparty. So now, uh, it, when the legislation is introduced f completely, if one of the big financial institutions gets into trouble or fails, the knockoff effect on the system and hence system stability will be much, much greater. So the stability will go down because now everybody is dealing with everybody else, so shocks propagate through the system in a much more dramatic way. What can be consequences? Well, the consequences of this is particularly great for those peripheral institutions. They will be unevenly punished and perhaps even uh, preferentially sacrificed to keep one of the bigger ones afloat. So the per peripheral institutions are usually pension funds. This is where we keep our money for our retirement. So when one of them fails, perhaps not that much money is involved if it's not a particularly big pension fund. But the social consequences of such a default are of course very big and they are nowhere taken into account in that new legislation. I think the probability of the entire system getting into trouble is actually becoming higher rather than lower, and simply because of the particular structure of the financial system. It's not just a random network where everybody deals with everybody else. It has core and it has periphery. And increasing the core by introducing yet another core institution only increases the systemic risk rather than decreases it.